Venga means let's go in Spanish. Vamos, venga, it's the same. Vamos, venga, venga, venga. So for the lentils, we're going to make an, an, a, a, a non-typical aioli. This is a roasted acorn squash aioli. So basically, this takes about, I got, a, I got an oven at 350 degrees, and I'm just going to drizzle a little olive oil on top. So aioli, it's a combination of all, which means garlic, and oli, which means oil. So it's an emulsification of garlic that traditionally was done with pounding garlic in a mortar and then slowly drizzling olive oil on top. In our days, in order for the emulsification not to break, we put a base of egg yolk. But I came up with this idea out of the necessity of not using eggs. So it works pretty, pretty well. I'm going to sprinkle some, some garlic on top, garlic powder on top, and a little bit of pimenton the Spanish smoked pepper, and then I'm just gonna flip them over and we're gonna put them in the oven. It'll take about, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. When, once we touch them with a spoon and we see that the, sh the flesh is, is it's soft, that means it's cooked. Okay, so for this um, French lentil uh, dish I'm gonna do, um, I like to choose these baby little lentils because this dish reminds me almost like eating steak. Um, the, once you cook these lentils, they stay very, very chunky. Um, and um, I like that consistency in my mouth. And we're gonna serve these lentils with this chayote squash. So basically two vegetables, carrots and squash, that I like to eat it raw. As I say uh, before, um, it is important for me when I eat these dishes that there is a texture that it's not blended, it's acidity, texture is important, like crunchiness, seasoning. So we're gonna use these, these two vegetables in here. Also, we're gonna use some sunflower seeds, and also we have some dry prunes that they already have diced ahead of time, okay? And we're gonna flavor all this with tarragon, okay? I have the tarragon, fresh tarragon here, but um, we spoke last week about sweating onions. I got more sweated onions here, and this is basically um, tarragon that's already pureed with olive oil and I'm gonna mix it with the onions. So we're gonna peel these two vegetables in here and then we're gonna accompany with these two dry fruits and some tarragon oil with roasted onions. And at the end, we're gonna, we have this um, pimenton oil, which is basically olive oil that's been um, mixed with pimenton in a very low, low heat um, for about an hour and then we uh, sift it and that's the that's the what it comes out. I wish you could smell because this smells very very smoky. And then we have a little bit of um, blood orange vinegar, and then we have some rice vinegar here for acidity on the dish. So I've put here a pot of, of water to boil. I'm gonna drop a couple bay leaves. Some of the legumes they need to be soaking water. But the lentils don't need to be soaked in water ahead of time. You can just pretty much go straight from the back into the water. So we're gonna do one cup of lentils, should be enough. And I'm gonna wait for the water. I'm gonna flavor the water with some bay leaf. And I'm gonna wait for the water to start boiling. In the meanwhile, we're gonna start preparing our vegetables. Okay, we got we're gonna use a couple carrots. Chop the ends. And we're gonna peel them. And we're gonna eat we're gonna eat this raw. So I always wait for the last minute to do this. This is other than giving more more putting more ingredients, it's gonna be great for, for texture as well. Try to, to be as consistent as you can in your dice, but it is not important that everything is exactly the same. Important, as, as you can see, to have a sharp knife. I 
I think with one carrot it might be enough for one cup of one cup of lentils. Once this is done, we can get a, a big bowl. I just start pouring everything on top of it. And now we can do one of these chayote squash. And the same I do with this. I'm gonna try to make dice that they're closer to the, the carrot. You can eat the whole thing in this squash. Um, some of this stuff, I didn't go, I just basically, these recipes, I developed them slowly. They're not complicated at all, but uh, I just went to the store and I found things that I, th I thought they could fit together. These guys are a little easier, but just gonna make some dice on these as well. And I was looking for, I mean, the, this squash re, re, reminds me a lot of like an apple almost. Except it's got different flavor. It's, it's pretty bland flavor wise. But as I was saying before, it's got this crunchiness and freshness that they go well with the dish. And I'm gonna get ready to dump the lentils in there. And as I said before, this is, we're gonna accompany with tarragon Okay, that I already have puree. So imagine this in a mortar. Basically what you wanna do, is I pick the, the tarragon. That's basically what I did last night with a bunch of it. You just pound it. At this point, I like to put a little salt. The salt helps, helps you to get a little grain. And I, I don't like to put my oil into any of the green pounding because I think the oil um, it makes it change the color a lot especially if you do it in a blender it's gonna go from green to almost pale yellowish so w once this is done see the, the mortar it helps because it completely smashes everything so once this is done I just put a little olive oil And this is basically what, what, uh, what I had done in here in a bigger scale, okay? So I, I would start getting, getting um, done with this. And we got these onions here. We spoke about this the other day. Those are onions that they were sweated for about 45 minutes. Remember to dice them small. Once you're cooking them, cover them with a lid and just put a good, a good amount of olive oil. But this is going to be the richness in this dish. Everything is very dry so far. The lentils are going to be dry. Um, everything except this, the sunflower seeds, everything is going to be dry. So this is going to be our fanning agent in this dish. We got the water boiling here. I'm going to put the lentils. Just dump in here. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to put another, another cup. Just because I, I think we have a, enough enough ingredients here, I have a cup. It is fine. It's not like the rice that it needs to have a, an a, a exact amount of of, um, of liquid to cook. The lentils can have more liquid than than they need. So we're gonna taste the lentils. Remember that they gotta be very very crunchy to uh, the point that it's called al dente, um, um, hard to bite in your teeth. Um, but not too, not too, not too raw. I'm gonna try one. I think they're. Perfect. Now you'll be able to see it, but you see that they're, they're hard to the fingers, still almost, almost right in the middle. You see they're very, very hard. I like them this way. So we're gonna drain this. And because this is a cold dish, we're gonna put the lentils to cool off before we mix them with the rest of the ingredients. All right, so the, the acorn squash should be ready. Let's see, by now, it should be soft to the finger. 
I can see by the color, yes, this is ready. Now we just gotta wait for it to cool off to be able to be manageable, otherwise you're gonna burn your hands. But we can flip it over to cool it off easier. So now what we wanna do is get rid of the seeds and use the flesh. And with the flesh, we're gonna do a nice puree similar to aioli. And as I said before, with the difference that it's gonna be big and aioli because we don't use any egg. I just need for it to, to cool it off. All right, so my acorn squash, it's cool enough to handle, still hot. Still hot, but we're gonna start making the aioli. Okay, or... So, once we roast this in the oven, this is great, you know, you can make a soup. I call it aioli because it reminds me of the texture of aioli without the, the egg. So, inside, it's got a few seeds, which we're gonna get rid of. Okay, and now you're gonna see how easy the flesh is gonna come out of it. So we, we're just gonna put this in a bowl. If you have a mixer, I'm just gonna show it to you how to make it in a bowl to make it easier. But if you have a mixer, I, I always do it in a mixer myself. So once this is done, I would probably recommend to use a, to use a, a, a blender at home but you see how, how, how easy, how easy it, it, it comes apart. So at this point, I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil and see if we can make it into, into a nice aioli type of puree. We almost got it. At this point, I would like to put some acidity. See, we, we incorporate the oil into it. At this point, I would like to eat to use some acidity. And here I have um, blood orange vinegar. You could, I'm gonna use some of this. You could very much use juice of a lemon. So this is almost ready, this aioli. And as I say, I call it aioli myself. You could call it puree of acorn squash with olive oil and vinegar. But the idea is to enrich these lentils. Okay, this is, this is done. I'm gonna taste it for seasoning. I think it's fine. I'm gonna add a little salt. We didn't put any. All right, so we got this. We got this ready, okay? Number one protagonist in this dish are the lentils. Remember, we cook them, we cool them off to the point they're very crunchy. And once again, these, those are dishes that I would like to recommend, especially the summer is coming now, to eat them cold or at room temperature. So I'm gonna dump all the lentils we got here. We're gonna put the, the, the squash and the carrots that we've cut, everything in here. We're gonna put some of these sweated onions. And by the way, if you wanna see how to make them, check out the other video. So we're gonna put a couple of these sweated onions for now. We can always add some more. We have some tarragon here that's been pounded which, with olive oil, which we showed that in the mortar. We're gonna put some of that as well. We're gonna put um, some pine nuts. Sometimes what I do, I, I incorporate the pine nuts with the tarragon and the onions in the mortar. Not necessary to do that. We have some sunflower seeds. And then we got some dry prunes that I already have, have diced. Always, as always, I have some vinegars here at the end. I have some of my seasoning with um, salt, uh, pepper, and, and paprika, or pimenton. And then we're gonna put some of this, some of this aioli on it. And now we're just gonna mix it. And by the eye, I could see right away if it needs something else or not. But it looks like if it's getting on the right shape, you can see how, how the, the lentils are absorbing all the fat that we've put on it. So we may even need more at the end. At this point, as I say, you know, we're gonna Put a little bit of, um, I have some apple cider vinegar here, just a little touch of that. 
and I'm sure we're going to have to season it. At this point, we can season it a little bit. And now we're going to start tasting it to see what we're missing. Hopefully, not a lot. Yeah. A little bit more vinegar. A little bit more of the of this love here. And this doesn't need much other than sitting down. And any any other touch that you want to put. I mean, I don't want to repeat myself. We could drizzle it with some more olive oil on top. We could use some of the some of the pimenton oil we already have, but that's it. The lentils with acorn squash aioli. Hey everybody, I'm Drew Hayes. I'm a registered dietitian and assistant professor here at the University of Texas, and I specialize in food science. So now we're going to talk about this delicious lentil dish in front of us. I will talk a little bit about food science and nutrition. So the first thing I want to talk about is lentils. And so lentils and pulses in general, so beans and legumes, um, are really truly nutritional powerhouses. So they contain fiber, they provide carbohydrates, and they provide protein and they also count as a vegetable. So you're knocking out a lot of really important things in your diet when you consume uh, beans and lentils. So lentils are some of my favorite pulses because they contain more fiber than most beans or other legumes. Um, so they have about 14 grams per cup of fiber and that's an excellent amount um, of something that can be lacking in our diet. So lentils also provide calcium, um, which sometimes may be a nutrient of concern for someone that is following a vegetarian or a vegan diet. Um, and this is a place to get them. So again, lentils can't sing their praises enough, really outstanding um, sources of nutrition. They also contain iron, um, which is an important uh, nutrient for blood integrity. So the iron that comes from plants is not as absorbable as iron that comes from uh, animal sources. The good news is about a dish like this is we have onions and carrots um, and other vegetables present that contain vitamin C. And vitamin C, when consumed with iron, increases the bioavailability of the iron. Meaning that when we combine all these delicious plants together, the iron is absorbable and uh, there for you. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is I believe one of Chef Daniel's uh, favorite ingredients or a common ingredient in many dishes is onions. So onions have tons of nutritional benefits, um, but there's also some cool food science to talk about um, with onions as well. So you can see here, these onions are what we call sweated. Um, and so that sweating is uh, cooking the onions over a very low heat so that they slowly break down and we don't get, uh, we get very little browning. Um, and so what we're getting is evaporation of the water that's present in onions. Um, and we're getting concentration of flavors while we're breaking down the cell walls to make these nice and soft and delicious. So some recipes that you may see uh, may contain um, onions that have been browned or they want a nice brown onion. And that is actually a different reaction called the Maillard reaction. So within onions, there are certainly sugars um, and there are also amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. And when we cook the onions at a higher heat um, and evaporate the water off quickly, we get an interaction between the sugar and the amino acids that results in browning. That reaction actually gives us a whole different combination of flavor compounds than we get with sweating. 
And then there's a third way that we can cook onions called caramelizing. Um, and caramelizing is actually, um, can be taking this sweated onion further to where they get deep brown in color and extremely soft and extremely sweet. And that reaction is different than both sweating and the mired reaction with brown onions. So when we are uh, caramelizing onions, what is happening is we are getting interactions between the sugars present um, in the onions. So because it's at a low heat, very low, very slow cooking, that reaction results in extremely sweet and soft products. So just simply changing the heat and the cooking time can give you all kinds of different flavor compounds from the same building blocks of these onions.